Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking about Living History Day um, down at the Tenbrook Mansion. It's going to be Sunday, May 4th, 12 to 4. And what most people will probably like about it is a free event. So we have with us Wendy Birch once again. <laughs> She's the Executive Director of the Albany County Historical Association who runs the Tenbrook. And Carol Ann Margolis, who is the chair for this year's event and is also the educational coordinator down at the Albany Visitors Center. Correct. So welcome back. Oh, you were here last year. That's yeah, right. Okay. thank you. So welcome back. So this year's event, you were, we were talking before, you think it's about the 20th Living History Day in a row around there? Something like that. <laughs> We've been doing it for a really long time. All right. So this each year there's a different theme. This year's theme is called Hidden Treasures of Albany, which involves letterboxing. People might know what letterboxing is. So why don't we start with... Before we talk about all the events that day, Sunday, May 4th, is going to be archaeology tours, garden tours, Underground Railroad, historical reenactors, sheep shearing, a lot of the things that I, I, they seem to be up there every year. Some genealogy advice, also for free, vendors, um, music. So we're going to talk about all that. But first, this year's theme, Carol, mm -hmm. Hidden Treasures of Albany, and you're going to, we're going to be doing, you're going to be teaching the kids in letterboxing. So tell us what is letterboxing and how you guys are going to be doing it down there. Okay. Letterboxing is a really old um, uh, sport, if you want to call it. Uh, it's an activity that was started in 1854 in England where a gentleman hid a uh, bottle of wine, and it was not with wine in it, just the <laughs> bottle, and he put his calling card. And it started a tradition that the people who found his calling card actually mailed it back or letterboxed it back to him. And now I've been told, and this is many years later, there's about a thousand or 5,000 letterboxes all over this area of England. Well, 1998, uh, an article was written in the Smithsonian Magazine about okay. this tradition. And it, People said, we got to do it here in North America. And so people didn't put wine bottles, but yeah. instead they had containers that inside the containers they would put a, a rubber stamp so that people could stamp their journal. If they had a journal yeah. of uh, just unlined paper, they could take the stamp from the letterbox they found and put it into their notebook. And then they would take their own stamp that they made and it could be a store-bought stamp or it could be a stamp you made and put it into their letterbox. And it doesn't cost anything. You have to bring ink with you, but you will find that people find these letterboxes and they put stamps in it. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a name. They don't put their own name. They come up with what I call a trail name. And they put it into the letterbox. And this particular one, I just pulled up. Uh, they're usually not underground, but I pulled up uh, outside the visitor center. And it was planted about three years ago. This is the visitor center, center down? Yeah, Albany Heritage Area okay. Visitor Center, Quackenbush Square. And 30 people in three years have gone and put their stamps into this particular letterbox. Really? And so out there, there are 30 people that hopefully put this person's stamp in their yeah. notebook. So okay. we're excited about it. So I, I, I was talking before we started, I was telling you, um, I was on the top of Crane Mountain and found one of these boxes. And this is before I knew what it was. So this obviously goes on in, in uh, wilderness and trails uh, and in urban areas and... Absolutely. You can go on a free site, atlasquest.com. 
Um, I think it's dot. Uh, I think it's dot com. It, it could be dot org. But these are now all over North America. All over North America, <laughs> and you can find the clues. And that's how I found this box. I actually found the clues on the internet that gave me instructions. It's like a treasure hunt. And we think a lot of people in the Albany area would love to do this sport because it doesn't cost. But you found anything. the one right outside where you right work. Right outside okay. where I work. Had no idea it was there until I went to the clues okay. on this free website. And um, we want the people uh, who so, visit the Living okay. History Day. To so do on it. Living History Day, Sunday, yeah. May fourth, noon to four. How? You, Tell us what you're going to be doing. You're going to be making stamps, and you're going to be hiding yes. one, or yeah. I'm not sorry, I shouldn't say you're going to be hiding one. You're going to have well, people look are, for one. Yes, or? we're going to give them clues. We are going to have one, um, at least one, on the Tenbrook Mansion uh, site. Uh, so it's not going to be buried, but it is going to be hidden. Okay. And they'll have to use the clues, and inside the stamp will have the Tenbrook Mansion oh, on okay. it. But they're going to get to make their own letter box, and we'll teach them how to make their own letter box. And they will also uh, get an opportunity to make their own signature stamp. Okay. So it's going to um, give them clues also for other sites, historic sites in the greater Albany area that already have letter boxes. Okay, so there, there are several sites, yep. historical sites, that you know have these. Yes, All absolutely. Right, so the, this could be uh, the start of. Um, what a capital district uh, litter boxing thing. Yeah. Well, very good. So I know who you're going to be. Is this, is this for kids or for anybody? Anybody. anybody. Okay. I can tell you this is one that, you know, grandparents down to, you know, very young kids, if they can walk or they can be carried, they can enjoy it with the okay. rest of the family. Well, Living History Day. Now, Wendy, why don't, you, why don't we start here? Um, this is the 20th, we think, 20th in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. What, what is living? Tell us, give us a little summary of what is Living History Day, and then we'll talk about some of the events that are going to be down there that are for free. And uh, Tenbrook Mansion, 9 Tenbrook Place, right down in downtown Albany. That's right. So. Yeah, sure. Um, living History Day is, has traditionally been kind of our opening day. It's kind of when we open the tour season. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm at the Tenbrook Mansion all year round, but we really start having walk in tours really May through October. So Living History Day is sort of a big celebration where we have uh, it's like opening day. Kind of. Yes, okay. we have historical reenactors on the grounds. We have music. We have vendors, um, and uh, a lot of fun demonstrations and activities to do. Uh, you know, the ponies will be there and other little animals. You mentioned the sheep. So it's a lot of fun and it's a free event. So it doesn't cost anything. So you just come down and just uh, enjoy uh, um, everything history. I guess. Okay, you and then so why don't we talk about some of the. Um, events they're going to have. Now, Carol, were you involved in setting up some of the other events besides the letterboxing? Well, you're the yes. chair of the events. Well, yes. You must have. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't know. Why don't we go or we'll go in order. Well, no, we won't go in order. We'll talk about some of these. You're going to have historical reenactors. Now, who's coming this year? I know in the past you've well, had. Abe Lincoln, and he's <laughs> yeah. still very tall. He's a wonderful uh, reenactor, and it's uh, perfect uh, for us to have him there. Uh, the Tenbrook, it's been around since 1798 the Tenbrook Mansion. Mm -hmm. Of course, Abraham Lincoln lived a little later than that, yeah. but uh, the history goes to the modern day that there have been people, and during the 1800s when Abraham uh, Lincoln lived, uh, there would have been people right there at the mansion. Now, when the historical reenactors, do they stand in a spot and do like a set piece, or do they just walk around and mingle and people can come up and... It depends on who it is. Abraham Lincoln, he does travel around and talk to people and enjoy the different activities he, that are going on. And he stays in character, I would He know, does, so. yeah. Um, you know, you end up with some military encampments, so, you know, they'll set up some tents and they'll kind of be around. You know, the Civil War Roundtable usually comes and has a display. Are you going to so. have some, um, some reenactors there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So um, there'll be people dressed up in different period costume from a lot of different oh, eras. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the big things that goes on all year round when you're there, but mm -hmm. people can see it on this day, the arch the archaeology excavation. So what's mm -hmm. That's always been an ongoing thing, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, well, every year we do an archaeology camp in the summer for kids, um, and um, it's run by Hartgen Archaeological Associates, uh, and. For the last, I think, three or four years mm -hmm. now, they've set up an actual dig on the grounds, and you know anyone can. Although it's usually surrounded by kids, come and they help dig and they you know sort through the material. So it's a re it's a real dig, and they they do discover different items. And what are some of the things they have discovered down through the years? The I last yeah, the last couple of years, what they've done is they've dug in an area that uh, there was an indication on one of the old maps that it, there had been a structure there, and they really weren't sure what the structure was. So they found bricks and mortar, and we now 
now believe that um, this was the site of a summer kitchen. Oh, okay. And that when it was dismantled, there's an addition onto the Tenbrook Mansion, which is where the butler's pantry is, and they think that, that this, those bricks were used to, okay. to do that. And then, Carol, the um, part of part of the um, thing, I think this is part of the archaeology, I'm not sure, the Underground Railroad? Yes. Um, it was right down the street, or what's? Well, the home of Stephen and Harriet Myers is just right around you know, you don't have to go very far from the Tenbrook Mansion. And they were very active, uh, very important people on the Underground Railroad. And uh, he published a newspaper called the Northern Star. And of course, a lot of people use the North Star to get freedom, the freedom seekers, mm -hmm. to Albany and other areas. And he was such an important person. Um, we will be having, um, they're restoring his home. It's not done. But uh, Paul and Mary Liz Stewart have been very active in the the Underground Railroad um, sort of discovery process, mm -hmm. and they are restoring this house. And they normally do a tour around the greater area of the Tenbrook Mansion, where a lot of things happen. So it wasn't all secret in Albany. Yeah. And again, having Abe Lincoln there and having <laughs> uh, people talking about that period of history. So it um, was it was a stop. There, in, oh, there was a stop in Albany. Lots of people stopped and got help. Okay. And again, there were a lot of different people that were there. So um, there's a lot of information now. It's, uh, again, I think a wonderful opportunity yeah. for people to learn more about it. But were you saying that at the time in Albany, it, it really wasn't, uh, it was an open secret? Or? They actually had in some of the newspapers and information, they had meetings, a lot of the abolitionists and oh, okay. other people, the Quaker, the Mott sisters, there were people that knew that they were helping okay. others. So I think it's a, they can answer a lot more questions, but um, that's a, a nice opportunity okay. at this event to learn more about the Underground Railroad. Okay, now here's two events, I think, that are always popular with the kids. You're going to be having pony rides, a petting zoo, and the sheep shearing. So I know what it, you've given us the rundown in other years, but since you've been doing it, what's are these very popular events? Or? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, there's all there are, is always a crowd around the sheep shearer. He explains what he's doing. He's wonderful. He lets the kids help because he brings an old-fashioned shear that you have to pump to get it going. Oh no, no electric. No, nope, no, no electric you, razor. No. Uh, no. <laughs> And uh, so the kids love that. Of course, they love the pony rides, and um, and Ponies for Hire always brings a bunch of little oh, baby okay. animals, chickens, things like that, that the yeah. kids can play with. All right, and I see one event. I'm, I, I'm, uh, this might be new. I don't remember talking about this in other years. You're going to be having free genealogical advice. Yeah, what um, is? she's come. Uh, I think she was there last year too. Um, mm -hmm. And she, uh, Tara Fantauzi, she actually has agreed to come to the mansion. Actually, every, the first Saturday of every month she comes. So if anyone wants some free advice from her at other times, they can make an appointment with her. Come to the and mansion. And she's there. Okay, so I should say she's there the first Sunday of every month. Saturday. Yeah. First Sunday Saturday. Yep. For, and it's for free. It is. Although you have to make an appointment, and okay. then she sits down with you and, and gives some advice. Um, but uh, I. I anticipate her being there mm -hmm. on Living History Day. So she'll be there on Living History Day. Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really what are, are, you, are, you, are you, have you been down there when she's there? I have, yes. Well, now, what are the kind of things people... Um, you, I think generally people, they, they start researching their family tree and they kind of hit a roadblock. And with her being a professional mm -hmm. genealogist, she says, uh, you know, let me see what, you, explain to me what you're doing. Let me see what you have. She'll take that stuff and then um, a week or two later gets back to them and says, okay, this is, the, this is what your next step. This is what you need to do. Okay, so it looks like I've been reading the thing here. That you give that you give her your information, and she gives you sort of a plan of what to do, and where, right. where to go, when, and everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, in my 25 years of being a librarian, we always, we're always, I always don't like genealogical questions, so maybe I'll be sending people down there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's so much fun now. There's a lot of well, now there's there's, there's so much more on the internet actually. Absolutely, it, it is easier. We do, we actually yeah. do have less less questions because people yeah. do are doing it themselves yeah. now, but. Yeah. In the old days, before the internet, right. it was it was a little more yeah. difficult yeah. to doing with all that. So now, on the grounds, um, you're going to be having uh, music all day. What? Who are you having this year? Where? What groups? I know this well, is a popular. Well, I'm pretty uh, sure that the Ash Choir, the Albany School for the Humanities, um, show choirs coming back this year and there's a group of children also that I, um, I they've shown some interest. I haven't gotten a definite from them yet. Um, they're a fife and drum. Group, okay. So. And Although, Rural Felicity. Rural Felicity's coming back. They've been here, uh, been there every year, and they're, they play um, colonial music. Also, the, nice. they're going to be playing music of the style, or of the era, 
when the Tenbrook Mansion was About sort of. That, oh, that okay. Time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now at Carroll, you, you were telling me this before. You're going to have a master gardener down there, or was the, I, I'm several. assuming he's there. Several, oh, several. several okay. master gardeners. So why don't you tell us who's going to be there and what okay. kind of things people can. Um, they can do demonstrations or can people ask them questions? Oh, they can definitely ask questions, <laughs> which is a perfect time. It's a week before Tulip Fest, mm -hmm. and there will be wonderful tulips there. That um, The Master Gardeners maintain the grounds of Cornell Cooperative Extension Service Master Gardeners. These are volunteers that keep the grounds absolutely beautiful. And it's besides Washington Park, I think it's like my favorite place to go, public space that you can go and see beautiful plants. They'll give gardening information and tours because like people want to mm -hmm. know what some of the flowers are, the trees are, they have questions. But we also are going to add an additional thing with the extension service. We're going to uh, have flowers uh, and uh, vegetation to support monarch butterflies that are very much uh, threatened now. There's not enough uh, food for their caterpillars and sometimes not enough nectar food for the adults. Oh, okay. So we're really going to, it's a perfect place with sun and enough land there. We're going to add some additional things and we can get other people at that day who are interested in helping to protect the monarchs and, and plant So the what right are they going to, they're going to like set up a, what, like a they're, feeding station or something? They're going to set up an informational table oh, okay. on it and some resources and uh, we'll give them plant material uh, that would be great. Um, I think we'll maybe have them start some uh, milkweed but we'll probably do an annual milkweed instead of the common milkweed and that's the only source of oh, okay. food for the caterpillars. So then the, and the gardeners, the master gardeners, beside, there'll be tours of the, of course there's tours all the time of the of the, of the grounds, mm -hmm. but you're going to be having them this day for... Yep, they'll be there on hand to answer questions oh, okay. uh, about the gardens and to show people around. And then there'll be tours of the mansion itself, right? Yes. So Typically, the way we work it on Living History Days, um, we ask some of our volunteer do docents to sort of be stationed in different rooms, and then um, the... the um, the visitors are able to just sort of wander through and can and our docents can answer questions about things about so. the, mm -hmm. the history of the room or the um the, i was going to say the events but not the events yeah the, you know the, the people that live there yeah. the objects in the room whatever oh, okay. whatever interests people mm -hmm. and the and i should say the house goes back to what 17 what were you saying 1798, 1798. his house burned unfortunately oh, down okay. on <laughs> I, what would today yeah. be broadway mm -hmm. street and so he moved up the hill a little bit great view of the river and so um that's why he ended up there instead of oh, okay. uh, on broadway there was a fire that I, I don't know how many houses and buildings, but it was numerous mm -hmm. in, in 1797. I think where the house is, was that that was like the outermost border of the city at the time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, when <laughs> the Tenbrook Mansion was built, Clinton Avenue was the city limits. And that's about two or three blocks oh, okay. to our okay. south. Now, um, this is always an important part of events like this. You're having a lot of vendors, food vendors. Um, who's um, what, what kind of things can people... I don't think we're going to get really fancy with the food. It'll <laughs> mainly be things like hot dogs oh, okay. and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we have other, you know, a lot of, a uh, if, if, if few crafty type vendors will be okay. there. So Now, will there be any um, vendors selling, selling not, not food, but crafts and things? Yes, that, that's the plan. I know um, for sure we have Ruth Ann Price coming who also sells uh, at our Holiday House shop. Oh, okay. She does a lot of things with herbs and yeah. um Right. So now the parking, that's always a big thing when these events, is there plenty of parking down there? We do have a parking lot on site. Okay. So uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's off street parking and, um, you know, it does fill up because we do yeah. get busy, but, um, now how does this yeah. usually work? It goes noon to four. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Sunday, May 4th. People just sort of wander in and out all day. Yeah, you can come whenever you want to. Although I will say that I think the ponies are just coming from one to three. So if you want to ride okay. the ponies, that's you should come between those times. And this is the this will be the week before the Tulip Festival. Now, I I I didn't think it would. I thought it was going to take longer to cover all this. Is there anything you want to, Carol? You want to add anything about? Living History Day or down at the Vis Albany um, Visitor Center? Well, it, a lot of things are going on, um, obviously, at uh, Living History Day. And it, it really is, a, as you said, a free family event. Everybody seems to enjoy. They're always a little bit different, and it's a great time to meet people. And so we really encourage people to do that. The same day, uh, Historic Cherry Hill will have, um, they have a 50th anniversary as a house museum. Oh, okay. And they're going to be having things free, and so that might be something, you know, that you, you 
coming down, mm -hmm. you can do. The visitor center is open seven days a week, and we would love to have you know people come. Um, there is some parking. Uh, there's a little overpass uh, that comes off the 787, <laughs> and there's some free parking there. And uh, we are we have always changing exhibits, art exhibits. We had this a wonderful in the, in the, right um, in the visitor, visitor center, center. Okay. and people don't know. They always think it's uh, you got to be a visitor from I out know, of town. Yeah. <laughs> but we really have a lot of different things, and uh, we have a planetarium there. A lot of people don't know that. There's a and planet, really? Yes, I, and I didn't uh, know that. we are a NASA <laughs> space place. The third Saturday of the month, we have uh, shows for children as well as for adults, and oh, we okay. try to educate them. There's a lot of other things um, that promote uh, the astronomy. In fact, uh, the original uh, Dudley Observatory uh, was right, not very far from the Tenbrook Mansion. The so one that's over in Schenectady. The Schenectady now, now at my High. It started, it started you know. in that area yeah. right above, uh, a little bit above uh, where the um, Tenbrook Mansion, a little farther up, uh, if you know where Arbor Hill Elementary yeah, yeah. School. 1852, it's really one of the oldest uh, research places okay. having to do with astronomy and they mapped a lot of stars so you okay. learn all this little yeah. history that yeah, okay. you don't even know about so come to the visitor center we have great crafts too local artisans um, especially uh, a lot of work in the last year promoting um, the local artisans so if you come to the Albany Visitor Center great gift shop you're looking for a gift it'll be a, a it, locally locally grown okay. shall I say <laughs> and the Albany Visitor Center it's right down in Quackenbush Square that's right right, okay. right. just a block down from the the Palace Theater. Well, I think after this winter, <laughs> people will be really ready to bust out and, and by, by May 4th, because we've been in for, this has been a really cold, a really cold winter. So, Wendy, um, any final words here? Um, I'll just mention, too, we have another location that's right around the block from the mm -hmm. Tenbrook Mansion called King's Place, where we're running a series of exhibits, and there'll be a new exhibit in Time for Living History Day on some Albany businesses. So that'll be another thing that people the, can check out, too. Current businesses or, like, from the past? Like they're his... mostly current businesses. Oh, okay. It's a partnership we're doing with that. It's a class that Siena College is doing, so okay. the students are actually, in pairs, researching okay. different Albany businesses. They'll be just And what's it that. called, King's? King's Place. Is that the place where the maps were? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Did you go? I saw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great. All right, so Living History Day in Albany at the Tenbrook Mansion, 9 Tenbrook Place, Sunday, May 4th from noon to 4, and everything is free. Yes. So. Thank you, Wendy, once again. Thank and rain or thank shine. I should, rain or shine. Because yeah, we've okay. had both. Yep. <laughs> and okay, so thanks, Wendy and Carol um, from the Albany County Visitor Center and on the board of the Tenbrook and the chair for this event. So you're wearing many hats. All right, well, we'll see you next time on Getting to Know You.